Hey, does anybody know uh, where the tanks spawn? Like, shut up. Fuck you, friendly. <laughs> My guys, we're doing a flanking maneuver. Go northwest, northwest. Enemies northwest. Give me the infantry. Straight ahead, northwest. <laughs> Got him. Got the bastard. Jumping in tactical games needs to die. The only thing that's acceptable is climbing, vaulting, and lean. They should be a requirement. Those of you that don't know what the Honest Opinion series is, it's basically me playing alphas or betas and telling you what I thought. Bear in mind that these games aren't finished, so don't take this as the final product. So the first beta happened not too long ago, and I know I'm a bit late on this, but everybody else gave their opinion, so I thought I'd get mine. Overall, I came out liking it, but if I had to give it a grade, it would still be a work in progress. There are still a bunch of vehicles that are missing, there's still a bunch of mechanics that are missing, animations definitely look better from the alpha, graphics still look gorgeous, although YouTube can't truly show its true beauty. Optimization is definitely this game's forte. My rig is on the screen for you guys to see. I was able to run everything on Epic, and it never really felt choppy to me, unless I got really close to another player, but I don't think that had to do with optimization. I think that's just like, I don't know, something to do with the player? I thought that the gameplay was pretty good, but they seriously need to let me hold my breath a little longer because the moment that I'm about to take the shot, the thing just gives way. That was really annoying. The sounds in the game actually sounded really good. They just needed to be a bit louder in my opinion. I mean, I had the sounds on default, so I don't know how loud it was actually in the game. Like the sounds sounded good, but they just need to be louder, if that makes any sense. If there was any sounds that I didn't like, I think the bar and the Thompson sounded better in the alpha, but maybe that's just me. You be the judge. I don't like the peephole that the Thompson has, but all the other sites seem pretty good. I think for the Thompson, they should make it so that the peephole is either bigger or they just go back to the top aim that they had in the alpha or give me the option to flip to it. They have dismemberment, which I think is fantastic. It's kind of like insurgencies, but not really like bodies can get torn in half. Whoa, oh shit. my God. That was a mine. I think he's dead. Looks like. Oh my God. I think he's dead. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> like, that's how crazy it can get. The devs were saying that they were making new character models, but I don't think I actually saw anything that was new. But I mean, to be fair, I didn't get a good look at him. The only thing that I noticed that was different is that the medic's cross looks different on his helmet. Like, it looks all dirty, which I actually don't like the way that it looks. But yeah, I didn't notice anything different, at least from the alpha. Speaking of medics, the medics seem to be really rare. I see a medic. It's like seeing a unicorn. Wow, so nice. I see a medic in actual real life video game medic in this game. Nice, bro. Your helmet looks very nice. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Like every squad has a medic, but you have to physically choose him. But the problem is that people won't choose them because they know that they only have a pistol. When you pick the medic role, you have to like sacrifice a long range weapon with a pistol, which I can see why they did it. It's because the medic is supposed to be in the background most of the time. They didn't change that from the alpha. Were well, the snipers too OP? Uh, it's debatable. Like there's, there's only two of them on each team, but literally if the team doesn't use smoke, the sniper can pick them off from a distance and the sniper does get a decent amount of ammo. So I don't know, that one's debatable for me. Tanks. Tanks to me felt tedious, at least when it came to driving. So those of you that don't know, the tank has like a gear system for the driver. Basically what he has to do is he press shift, 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 shift to fourth gear so that he could go really fast when he's driving. But then if he wants to reverse, he has to go control, 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 control all the way down to reverse. That felt a bit tedious, especially when I'm getting shot at and I really need to back up. If I can make a suggestion to the developers, then is it possible for you guys to make me hold down control? So that way it just goes down to reverse or maybe let me hold shift so I can go up to the fourth gear or third gear or second gear. Like, you know, I don't know if I should really be pressing that button so many times. I'm just saying. Another thing with the driver, the driver can't actually tell where he's shooting with the whole gun unless he's actually shooting beforehand. Then he has to direct the gunfire towards the direction that he's shooting. Like there needs to be some kind of reticle right there so that he knows where he's shooting. The turret. The turret is extremely slow. 
Like, maybe it's just me, but oh my god, I'm trying to turn the damn turret. Uh, come on. Uh. The turret can definitely be a little more faster. There also seemed to be a glitch where the tank would bounce up and down like a lowrider. I think this only happens to tanks that started smoking or ones that respond back at base. That's when it really started happening, at least from my experience. One last thing for the tanks. I feel like the tanks got caught on a lot of things that I feel like they should have just rolled over, like barbed wire or tree stumps. Dragon teeth make sense because, you know, they're set in that specific spot to stop tanks, but, you know, tree stumps are like by themselves like i feel like the tank should just go over it i think a majority of the stuff that i said so far has just been basically nitpicks but here's one big thing that's not necessarily a nitpick it's more of a problem per se in the beta there was a new mode called sectors and strong points at least i think it was a mode i'm not entirely sure if it was the standard or the mode but anyways the point of the mode is to capture these sectors by having a lot of troops in them or having your squad on the sector's strong point the strong point elevates the troopers capping power but if the enemy has more troops than the strong points capping power they can still take the sector it's an idea that seems cool on paper but put into practice it's uh it's okay. I think my biggest problem with it is that I never really felt like I needed to hunker down and defend a location. I always felt like I needed to keep pushing, running from place to place. They never gave me a reason to defend a location. And I think that's mostly because my squad went unchallenged most of the time. Like I'd literally get all the way to the other side of the map just by pushing through sectors and almost never seeing any enemy sometimes. And this is where I get to the most unfun and annoying part of the beta. So while I was on the enemy spawn, I would take a look at my map and then notice that all the land that I had conquered has all been turned to red i no longer own that territory so now i am forced to backtrack it's like somebody pulled a big prank on me oh you thought you had all that land the reason this would happen is because the enemy would go around my squad and conquer a sector that's way towards the center of the map. And this would force us to do a major backtrack across the map. Guys, look at the map. What the fuck? How this is impossible? So I'm just going to give a suggestion to the developers on one way that you could fix it. But of course, you don't have to listen to me. Let's say my squad captures a sector ahead of all the other sectors that my team already owns. Maybe we could lock the sector that's ahead of that one. So it forces my squad to defend that sector until the rest of the team decides to push ahead. And because my squad owns this sector, we have more land than the enemy. So we're losing less points. So it incentivizes the enemy to try and get the sector back. And to combat the problem of not running into the enemy, just make the strong points the only points that you have to fight over because if both teams are just capping the points by sector then they'll just never run into each other they could literally go past each other without ever fighting now you might say that that might get boring fighting in the same area but my suggestion for that is just move the strong point around the sector like every match that we play the strong point should move to a different position so that way it doesn't feel like we're fighting in the same spot every time so like i said in the beginning this game is fun but it still needs a lot of work. And this is only my opinion here. Maybe you have a different one than I do. Let me know in the comments down below. I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch. And I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.